There's a scarcity of African Americans in President Obama's cabinet, but Glenn Ford says black folks should be more upset about the policies of this administration rather than the number of black faces in high places. The Congressional Black Caucus is disappointed. They're indignant and upset with President Obama. Why? Because there are so few African Americans at the highest levels of Obama's cabinet. Harlem Congressman Charles Rangel goes so far as to say that he's embarrassed at the lack of black faces in high places in the administration. The Black Caucus reasons that since blacks voted so overwhelmingly for Obama's re-election, their loyalty should be recognized and rewarded through cabinet appointments. Well, there are two things wrong with that reasoning. First, political constituencies are not necessarily rewarded for their loyalty. Rather, they are given recognition and rewards in order to keep them loyal. In other words, there must be a credible threat that if a politician does not do right by one of his constituencies, they will stop being so loyal. That's why President Obama has been acting so very grateful to Latinos. Hispanics gave about 70% of their votes to Obama last year, somewhat more than in 2008. But at least 93% of blacks cast their ballots for the president, and black voters still outnumber Hispanic voters. Obama feels the need to curry favor among Latinos in order to keep their loyalty and build on it. Latinos made demands on the administration, especially regarding immigration. Blacks have made no demands of Obama in either of his presidential contests. So, the Congressional Black Caucus should be embarrassed for selling their loyalties and black interests so cheaply. Of course, President Obama takes the black vote for granted. Black leadership, including the Black Caucus, has given him no reason to do otherwise. The Black Caucus is all caught up in symbolism, but neglects the fundamentals of substance. The caucus wants a blacker cabinet. But what good are black cabinet members if administration policies work against black people's interests and against the interests of humanity at large? Eric Holder is the nation's first black attorney general. He presides over the federal prison system, whose inmate population continues to increase while state prison populations decline. Eric Holder justified President Obama's preventive detention law, declaring that due process does not necessarily mean access to the courts. Effectively, whole sections of the Bill of Rights have ceased to exist under this president. And yet, all the Congressional Black Caucus seems to be upset about is that we don't have more Eric Holders in high positions. The Black Caucus would have loved to see Susan Rice elevated to Secretary of State, a job held by two blacks in the Bush administration. Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell were warmongers and liars. If anything, Susan Rice is worse. She has been an active participant in a U.S.-Africa policy that has left six million Congolese dead since 1996. She supported U.S. policy in Somalia that led to what United Nations observers called the worst humanitarian crisis in Africa. And she is credited with convincing President Obama to wage a seven-month bombing campaign against Libya, which has now plunged much of North Africa into chaos. Susan Rice has more blood on her hands than Condoleezza Rice. She is the symbol and substance of evil. Yet, the Congressional Black Caucus wants more people like her in the cabinet which says volumes about the Black Caucus and the bankrupt state of what passes for black leadership in the United States.